We joined Mr. Joe Ferretti. I wanted to play Renegade for you, Joe, as I brought you on here today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought you'd play that for Phil, since uh, he's uh, you're clearly still a Steeler lover. You're, you're, you're not, Joe? Oh, of course I am. Yeah, come uh, on, man. Pra- you know, maybe not on the level of Phil McCoy. But... <laughs> he's younger. He's still got all that energy. He's still like a, he's still like a puppy. <laughs> You and me, we're old hound dogs now. Yeah, we've been through the wars. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Joe's with us for a couple of different reasons. Uh, first and foremost, we have Matt Harvey's petition to remove the two county commissioners in Jefferson County, uh, Patricia Jackson and, uh, and uh, Allison, uh, Jennifer Krause. I'm sorry, for whatever reason I want to call her Allison. Uh, Jennifer Krause. And, uh, and Bill had also uh, asked me to contact you in regards to uh, the Electoral College and the House of Representatives and what happens when an election gets thrown uh, to them. But I'd like to start off with Mr. Harvey first and his actions uh, recently. You have the, the document in front of you, and I know you've read it. Uh, your thoughts on, on how it was written and the petition to remove Jackson and Kraus from the Jefferson County Commission. Well, uh, my, my first impression upon reading this, Rob, is that uh, Matt Harvey went to great lengths to spell out what he perceives to be the problem in Jefferson County. And he clearly indicates that this th- these two recalcitrant Jefferson County commissioners are choosing not to attend meetings due to politics. And what he goes to great lengths to do is cite to their social media posts, which he claims reveals the reasons why they are not attending. And those social media posts have to do with the concerns that the names offered by the Republican Executive Committee for Jefferson County, which is where you go statutorily to get candidates to fill a vacancy, that those names offered by that committee are not, uh, these are people who are not sufficiently conservative. And so, uh, and, and their social media posts discuss things like, you know, Green New Deal and green energy and, and woke uh, uh, feelings about the society and, and, and that uh, they want true conservatives on the county commission. So, they are not going to participate because they disagree with the nominees. And that's really what it boils down to. And, of course, uh, Matt Harvey's uh, complaint that he has filed with the circuit court also cites uh, extensively to the law and why these uh, two commissioners are not fulfilling their duties and why they need to be removed then legally. So uh, I think it's well written. I think it spells out clearly the crux of the problem in Jefferson County. And of course he then uh, certainly uh, petitions the court to proceed with a removal of these two commissioners. Question was asked on our Facebook comment page. Why not just petition the judges to make them attend meetings as opposed to removing them? I know you can't think for Matt Harvey. Uh, He'll have to speak for himself on that, but any thoughts on that idea? Well, I, I, I repeat that question, Rob, because I, I didn't hear it fully. Is uh, was wouldn't it have been a better option instead of petitioning to remove the commissioners, petitioning to a judge to make them attend the meetings? Well, uh, you can sometimes, and, and you're referring to a, a writ of mandamus, which uh, is an option sometimes to compel uh, a public official or a a, a, a public committee or commission like we have over in Jefferson County to act, to do certain things. But the problem here is that compelling any one of these individuals to act, they can only act as a body, as a quorum. And so as we've seen, and and we probably should touch on this, there is a writ of mandamus actually pending now in Jefferson County. Uh, compelling, they're seeking the, the court order to compel the Jefferson County Commission to act. The problem lies in that the commission cannot act, commissioners cannot act individually. They can only act as a body, uh, 
pursuant to a quorum. And so I don't think there's going to be a writ of mandamus against individual commissioners to do anything. It's really a writ of mandamus compelling the body itself to act. And if the body hasn't have, doesn't have a quorum, then there's not going to be any act. So uh, I think the, the only option available to Matt Harvey was to seek removal. Now, the individual commissioners can cure this problem by showing up at the next meeting uh, and having a quorum and then proceeding with the business of the county. So there's a cure there uh, on an individual basis. But a writ of mandamus itself to compel some individual commissioner to do anything is really not the appropriate remedy because they can't do anything individually. They can only act as a as a body with a quorum. So long story short here, uh, the procedure is to remove them when they don't want to uh, fulfill their official duties. But it's already highlighted in Jefferson County the problems that are arising by this county commission's inability to have a quorum. The work of the county is not being done, and that's why this writ of mandamus has been filed by a development company over in Jefferson County saying, hey, we have a bond that should be released so that we don't have to continue paying interest on that bond. And without a county commission, we can't get it released. So we are now being hurt monetarily by the commission's inability to conduct business, and now we're seeking a court order to uh, have the judge command the county commission to act. But again, we get back to the problem. There's no quorum under which that commission can act. Joe, uh, on the show a couple of days ago, uh, Attorney General Patrick Marcy said he was going to take a hard look into this issue. What role does the AG have in in the, the local judicial system? Well, it's not defined in statute, Bill, what role the AG has other than to represent the public if the matter of um, a removal of a county commissioner is appealed to the West Virginia Supreme Court. There, the statute speaks to the attorney general. Uh, there, That office shall step in and represent the public on that petition for removal. And, of course, that's after the three-judge panel would have heard the uh, the matter at the local level. But to come to, to step in and say right now that the attorney general has any authority to act, it's not specified in statute. I think the attorney general's office can also issue perhaps an advisory opinion, a legal opinion, as to any legal issues that are being raised, either by the county commissioners who are showing up for meetings or those who are refusing to show up, if there's any legal issues there that might need resolved, perhaps Patrick Morsey's office can step in and say, well, we've evaluated the legal advice provided by the Secretary of State's office, and we're in agreement with it, uh, that these two individuals need to show up for work. But beyond that bill, the statute does not give the Attorney General any express authority to act other than in a representative capacity if the matter's on appeal before the West Virginia Supreme Court. Hey, Joe, in a case like this, there's clearly um, there's a financial impact, whether it's through the bonds or through grants that haven't happened, and, and they're, you know, it's all laid out in that, in that document. Are the commissioners themselves open to liability, civil liability for these actions? Is there a chance that they – is there – legal standing for them to personally get sued for the damage that resulted from their actions? They, it's possible that they could be subject to uh, a, a cost-shifting ruling by the court where if their actions are deemed to be clearly in some sort of bad faith posture, uh, they may be responsible for the court costs incurred by the prosecutor's office uh, in pursuing this petition for removal, uh, and it could go right up the line. It could be a cost associated with the hearing before the three-judge panel. It could be cost incurred on appeal to the West Virginia Supreme Court, and those costs could add up very quickly. So, yeah, there, there's a risk there. Uh, it, it's, uh, you know, looking at some other cases in West Virginia where this has been done, it's not often that there's a shift 
uh, of cost to the party who does not prevail, but it is possible that that could occur, and especially if, if the courts and especially if the Supreme Court finds that the uh, the objections to appearing at the at the county commission meetings and the objections to removal were in bad faith or done for vexatious reasons, like uh, like we might have here, unfortunately, because the only reasons being cited by commissioners Jackson and Kraus so far have to do with their political objections. Uh, they keep raising some potential legal issues, but I, I don't see that any of them have merit, at least based on anything that they've produced so far. And if they were to decide, okay, fine, we'll attend, does all of this go away, or would this, a case like this continue through to have them uh, removed? Uh, well, I think if here's well, here's the procedure. OK, and, and I think it's, it's important to understand that the process here uh, as to what can happen. Uh, they right now are the subject of a petition filed by the county prosecutor. Uh, this goes to the circuit court judge in Jefferson County. Now, I, forgive me, I'm not sure who's been assigned this this case yet, but it's either uh, Judge McLaughlin or Judge Hammer. And then uh, one of the, those two judges will determine at a preliminary hearing, whether there is sufficient evidence, if proven, that would result in the removal or one of two of these commissioners. Once the circuit court has determined that there's sufficient evidence offered, that this is a justiciable issue that needs to be resolved, uh, the petition is sent down to the West Virginia Supreme Court of Appeals, which will then appoint a three-judge panel to hear the case sitting in Jefferson County. So they'll actually commandeer a courtroom down there, have a hearing, and determine whether or not there is just cause for the removal of one or, or both of these commissioners. The commissioners will have an opportunity to appear with counsel and defend on the merits of these, these claims that they should be removed. Once that three-judge panel rules, uh, then the, the commissioners could be removed or if they disagree with the decision of the three-judge panel and they believe they were not permitted an opportunity to present their evidence or there were some rulings about the admission admissibility of certain evidence that they thought was, was improperly done, they can appeal to the West Virginia Supreme Court of Appeals, which will be the final decision maker on whether or not there is, and I think the statutory standard is clear and convincing evidence that either one or both of these commissioners have violated the statute. And the reasons for removal are specified in the statute, official misconduct, neglect of duty, or incompetence. And I believe Matt Harvey's petition here, John speaks in terms of neglect of duty. They've been sworn in as county commissioners. They are getting paid currently at county commission rates, but they're not showing up for work. So uh, that's going to be the standard that has to be met here, the neglect of duty claim, in order for this petition to be successful in getting their removal. Now, the timing of this is going to be important. Uh, the statute speaks in terms of responding in 15 days and 30 days, but I can tell you from experience uh and paneling three judges to hear this case is going to take weeks because you're coordinating a lot of schedules. And uh, I would not anticipate anything being done this year, perhaps early next year, having a, uh, a three judge panel prepared to hear evidence. And then you got the appeal process to the Western Supreme Court. We would be, if, a, if you're a Jefferson County resident and you want this resolved, You'd be lucky to get it resolved by late spring of next year. Joe Ferretti, our guest here on the program, attorney at law. Joe, this may or may not be something that you would have a, a, a scope of uh, research and knowledge to answer, but in particular with Matt Harvey, and I've not spoken to Matt since he filed this, 
Is it something that the prosecuting attorney would do on his own or would the president of the commission and Bill being a former president of the Berkeley County Commission, maybe you can weigh in on this as well. Would the president of the commission say, I need you to take action to remove these two commissioners on behalf of the Berkeley County Commission or the Jefferson County Commission in his case or the Berkeley County Commission bill if you were to do so? Is that something you'd be as the president requesting the prosecuting attorney to do? As long as this is held on, the fact that the county commission cannot function, yes. As president of the commission, I, that's something I would ask. Now, did Stolliper ask this question? I have no idea, but I would have asked that question. Joe, can the prosecuting attorney act on his or her own without the request of the president of the commission? Yes, uh, he or she can. Uh, in fact, in the statute, uh, there are uh, three, uh, I guess, uh, individuals or uh, political bodies who are specified as those who can bring forth a petition. One is the county commission. And of course, because this involves the county commission, uh, while Mr. Stolliper or Jane Tabb, the other sitting commissioners who are showing up for meetings, while they could have gone to the prosecuting attorney and said, hey, we need something done, uh, they themselves are not the petitioner in this case. But that the county commission is one who can deal with all elected officials on a local level who they feel need to be removed. The second individual uh, specified by statute is the prosecuting attorney so he can act or she can act on their own to bring forth a petition and that's apparently what has happened in this case with matt harvey coming forward with the filing of this uh, document last week the third way or third i guess group of people who are specified by statute are the public themselves uh you can have up to 2,000, there's a requirement you have at least 2,000 signatures on a petition to come forward. If you're a county of more than 50,000 people, you can also have at least 10% of the voters who voted in the last election bring forth a petition with that requisite number of signatures to remove a uh, public official. And if you look at the various instances throughout the state here in the recent past they go back 15 20 years by far the most prominent or i should say the most popular way that these kinds of petitions are brought are typically through public petition where somebody has made the effort to go out and get the requisite number of signatures and then they file a petition with the circuit court judge in that county where the public official is being scrutinized uh that's typically uh, i should say the most popular way this happens but uh in other cases and i think bill you probably uh, were you on the commission when this come up with uh commissioner Wright? no i i was uh no i was in the wings to come on but i was not on board at the time but i do remember okay, that. okay that's right you yeah and i don't think yeah, there's that, there's ever a legal case on that there's a lot of encouragement for him to start attending but i don't think it ever got to the legal status i gotta read by the way before you go any further joe i did text commission president stolifer the question if he and or jane requested the removal position by matt harvey be undertaken or did he act on his own and, and steve responded by saying matt did it on his own i fully support what he did but he did make it clear well, Matt filed this on his own. Yeah, and here's here's the issue, Rob. And I think uh, and I know Matt. You know, he, of course, he appears on the show regularly, and he, he was loath to, to comment on this, which which he shouldn't. He does it to matter right on his desk. Uh, the pressure was building up in Jefferson County. Uh, this had to be done, and I'm sure. Uh, if Matt Harvey was able to comment, he would say that at some point the business of the county becomes a paramount concern. And this writ of mandamus has been filed by the Lutman Development Corporation uh, clearly defines the problem. Uh, that, that development company has a bond pending. It, it, it has been reduced, but it's still over a million dollars. And they're paying interest on that bond. It's a performance bond. When you do a, as Bill knows from being a county commissioner himself, when these development companies do these developments, they have to post a bond to ensure that they perform certain things in constructing a development, like putting in sidewalks or water treatment plant or uh, things like that. And 
when these development companies complete that work, they go to the county engineer and say, hey, we, you know, we've done everything. Here's our certification from, you know, certain engineering groups and from the state DEP or whomever. Uh, we've done what we're supposed to do. We want that bond released so we don't have to pay any more money on it. And with the Ludman Corporation, that's exactly what happened. And they have a million-dollar bond pending before the Jefferson County Commission, and it's the county commission that then ultimately releases that bond. And because they're not conducting the business, this development company is saying, hey, wait a minute. You know, we're, we can't sit here in limbo forever. We want this bond released. Uh, so that, that's one of many problems that are starting to really bubble up here in Jefferson County, and the pressure had to be – developing pretty clearly for Matt Harvey to act because he's, of course, acting on behalf of the county here to make sure that county business gets done. But and, Joe, and so I, I Joe, oh, go ahead, Bill. No, he no, doesn't have time don't to have time. Bill, Sorry. Bill, okay. Bill's out of time. Uh, Joe, we're up against the hard breaks. So we got to go. I appreciate you as always. And I'll talk to you again on Friday. Yeah, Bill, we'll cover that uh, electoral college issue as soon as we can. Well, that's actually another part of this discussion, but we'll try to talk about it later. When I say it's over, Bill, it's, it's over. over. <laughs> it's over. It's gone. It's history. Final minute coming up next. <laughs>